Over here, you can see that I got six lights and six cylinders right here. So if I were to press Ctrl R, you can see that this is how it renders. So something is off over here. Everything is just too bright as you can see. But in real life, even if you have multiple lights, it does not light up the scene just as much. What is happening over here is that the light over here, this light is actually illuminating all over to this side, which is actually really uh, blowing out these things right here. So if you want to use multiple lights, you got to be more realistic. So you want to use something called fall off for this. So let's see how a fall off works. So now let's just render this out to get an idea. I'm just going to use interactive render reason to get an idea of how everything looks when we use different type of fall off uh, settings. So I'm going to go over here. Uh, not here, sorry. So I'm just going to stop the render right here. I'm going to enable the interactive render reason just like this. Drag this all all the way onto the left just like this. And there you go. This is how the light looks like right now. So these are the different lights in my scene. So the first light, as you can see, uh, has no fall off right now. I'm going to add in a fall off onto the first light. So I'm going to go over here and see my uh, fall off settings in my general, not in my general. So I'm just going to go on to my light settings. I'm just here. So let me go on to my fall off settings. It's in the details as you can see right here. There's fall off. Right now it's set to none. So there are different sort of fall offs that you can use. So the intensity, the setting of all of these lights are the, settings, uh, are the same. I'm just going to change the fall off. So over here, you can see that the first option is inverse square. As you can see this, the inverse square, square really lights up the reason around it, but fades away as the light passes by over here. So that's the first light. As you can see, this is the inverse square. You can also decrease the radius on how, uh, how much the light can be affected with. So you can see that there's like a like a spear right here around it, which you can actually control to control the reason where the light actually affects. So I can just move it down right here or move it up. I'm just going to keep the light same place. But if I were to increase the radius of this, you can see that it affects more area. But if I were to decrease this down, you can see that it only affects this uh, object right here. As you can see, this is inverse. So you can control the radius. You can also use the gradients right here to control more of the lightings right here, just like this. So you can control the gradient right here to have different sort of a feel to the lighting as well. So another thing over here that you can use is uh, the linear type of a fall off. So you can go over here and you can see that the fall off is much more linear. This also comes up with an area, but instead of this, and the, uh, the fall off here is quite shuttle as you can see right there. So let me go to the third light right here. I'm going to use fall off here as step. So step is much more of a sharper fall off as you can see. So I can control the area as well. So let me just reduce the size of this right here. And the step has a much more like a distinct fall off as you can see. So if I were to increase this in size, you can see that the area is let up just, just like this. So that's exactly where uh, the control happens around the spear itself. Let's go to our fifth light right here. And then I'm going to use inverse square. Uh, for this one. So inverse square is opposite to how this one works. So let me just reduce the size of this and let's see how that works. It's much more linear as you can see. So you can increase this. It's much more softer than this one out here, but works in a similar fashion, just like this. And now if you were to um, see the first uh, render, it is not as um, intense as the first one because it is mimicking how the real life lighting works like. So here, once the light is added, it lets up all the area, but once you actually use the fall off, it only affects the area which you want it to affect. So if you have multiple lights in your scene, one realistic output, then you might want to use fall off right here. So let me just use linear for this one as well, as you can see, so you can control the intensity and the area with the light control. So this one, the final one, uh, let me choose another fall off as well, something like a step maybe, and you can see that that really works out just like that. So this is how the final render looks like, just like that, render and decay. So you can just work around with this. Also use a gradient, just like that, and then work around with how the light is affected, just like this. So that is how you can use the step, the inverse, and so forth to actually work around with this.
uh, light types. Let me just add in another light type for this one. Uh, uh, okay, I just want to work around with this light type as well, make it more like a uh, linear. And there you go. So that is how you can work around with lights. And you can see that I got six lightings that I haven't seen the intensity, but the overall details are actually different. So you can also increase the contrast level of the lighting if you want to. But anyways, uh, that's how everything works like. So it gives you much more realistic uh, output and you can have multiple lights in the scene to come up with really wonderful results. So that's what fall off settings does in in uh in the lights in cinema 4d hope you guys learned something as always and as always please like comment share and subscribe